joining me on NDTV is the pop star who won our hearts for years. Once you listen to her, you can't get her out of your head. No one <laughs> else but Kylie Minogue herself. Kylie, thank you for your time. Thanks so much for having me. Kylie, this is uh, you know this is such an uh, such an such a different time. This is one interview. I wish it was in person, but promise me in some other time. <laughs> Promise, it's pinky promise for sure. It's Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Kylie, you know, we'll come to disco in a bit. I'll take you back also. Um, you know, everybody has their favorite Kylie song. Uh, I just want to ask you if when you look back, which were the songs that were like a turning point in your career? Well, I would have to start with the locomotion because that was my first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I didn't even have a record contract, I just recorded it as a demo okay. with some dreams. Um, so locomotion, but then once I was up and running, uh, better the devil you know, for sure. Mm -hmm. Then confide in me. Uh, there's a few, then spinning around. <laughs> right. <laughs> then, I know I would say those are the three. Those, those are, are the, three. the three. And when fans meet yeah. you, what do they talk about? Which, is, which are the songs that they talk about that they always remember? Oh, um, amazingly again that there's a lot people have very different favorites um you know a lot of them will uh i probably can't get through a concert anymore without someone screaming your disco needs you which was not really a single but it's kind right. of got a life of its own right. uh yeah i think i think fans would probably talk about the songs that didn't have a big as, as big a commercial moment, but a real fan favorites. Right, right, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Well, you know, everybody talks about reinventing themselves, reinvention. What does that mean to you? Because you've always been working, you've always been reinventing, but does it mean something special to do something you've not done before? I love the challenge of it. And mm. um, it feels very natural for me to, to change and evolve and, I remember years, like many years ago, say 10, 15 years ago, I was asked a lot about reinvention and <laughs> I found it a little difficult to um, to answer because it, it was never, and it still is never so much, um, it, it's not a conscious decision to say, I'm going to reinvent myself. <laughs> I mean, I am who yeah. I am, but I yeah. like to morph. So for me, it feels more like evolution uh, and pop music, what's happening what's what's been what's gone what's about to happen so just trying to plug into that and be um i'm quite happy being a chameleon <laughs> <laughs> right yeah uh, Kylie, what does it take you know oh, and you... also yeah. i would add to that that <laughs> it's been 30 something years yeah. so I, I i think to you know to start at 19 and um now be quite a bit older than, than 19 <laughs> um you know you go through so many changes yeah. in your in your life and and your development as a as a person and how you fit into the world and how you see the world mm -hmm. so i would say a lot of the changes that have um uh been in in my my sound and and, and look mm. um yeah it's reflective of me as a person and what's what's happening in in popular culture wow uh and also you know when you what does it take once you're done with with your album and you move on and you enjoy the success of it what does it take to again wake up one morning and tell yourself i'm coming up with another song i'm coming <laughs> up with another album yeah uh, it will often take me su by surprise because it's normally at the, you know there's the the writing cycle yeah. promo touring right. um and then you you kind of get you, claw your way over the finish line right. and i reckon it might be the very next morning i wake up going right what's next what can i do uh and everyone else rolls their eyes going oh can we just have a, can you just stop can you have a break but i sneak my breaks in in different places but um yeah i i i i, I don't know what what it is i guess it's curiosity and passion um and maybe some lunacy i don't know <laughs> And what do you like to do in the breaks? Nothing. I like to do very little. Um, right. uh, you know, catch up on TV, go mm -hmm. on a beach holiday. Uh, yeah, I try and just um, I try and yeah. I used when I was younger, a long long time ago. I would 
I remember thinking, why don't people go on just a beach holiday? Don't you want to do stuff like, I don't know, <laughs> go snowboarding or, you know, trekking or something. Now I'm quite like, a bad person. one week on a beach sounds really good. <laughs> Cocktail book, maybe some ping pong, that's it. So right. yeah, to, to escape, I just try and book a nice holiday. Right. And then came the lockdown. Uh, what was the lockdown like for a creative person like you? Um, for me, it's, uh, well, beyond the, the, the feelings that we all had of uncertainty mm -hmm. and, um, uh, you know, being scared, to be quite frank. Right. Um, then we just had to find a way around it. And I guess... I will always be so uh, so grateful that I was able to be creative and yeah. have that distraction and have a uh, a goal mm -hmm. um, in finishing the the album disco. Yeah. Uh, I learned some new skills. I learned how to record myself and had okay. to set up my own. Like I, I was on my own for right. months doing that, but I had company through doing the the remote sessions with. Uh, my co-writers and producers and yeah being able to create was so so um helpful and life-affirming for me and and none of it was lost that I I was so so um yeah so grateful and humble to still be able to connect with people at right. the time when we that's what we wanted right are you so were you were you were you and your team surprised by the way technology played a big role in you continuing to create music Yes. <laughs> yeah. The, the fact that we could, um, you know, I could work with my producers and they control my laptop and I could, and that was a good way for me to learn as well to see. Right. I mean, they go like, you know, this, this, the speed of light. So I'm trying to keep up <laughs> with what they're doing, but um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. And just stay in touch with family and friends and uh, yeah, yeah it's just such a, it's a crazy time. And you were in Australia throughout? No, I was in the UK. I was in okay. London. So I felt very, very far from my family. Yeah. Um, but I've been able to spend time with them this year, which has been amazing. Right. And then comes, uh, then comes Disco. Uh, do you want to tell the audience that's watching this interview right now, what all should they expect in this one? What to expect from Disco? Um, you might not be sitting down very long. <laughs> the album only has, I think, like two not so up moments okay yeah um so i wanted to do a deep dive into disco mm -hmm. which wasn't quite as straightforward as i may have thought initially you know when you're referencing incredible timeless disco songs mm -hmm. disco classics um it took a while to uh yeah to, to find my entrance point without just sounding like a terrible copy of an amazing disco song um you know not to go well that's the bass line from that or that's the the, the guitar lick or you know um yeah it's find my way so it's a, it's mostly a disco party I would okay, say. that's okay. the short answer to the question right. before i i just realized i was going down another path <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> right what is it you know what is it about the concept of disco that keeps coming back well, it does keep coming, but I think ever since its inception in the late 70s, it, it's always been there. We know mm -hmm. there was, you know, the, the great disco movement. Then there was the disco sucks, yeah. like <laughs> disco was a dirty yeah. word. Um, but I think it it's always, it, it will always be, those songs will always be played at parties, you right. know. Um, and when Daft Punk did their, uh, their disco album, everyone suddenly looked at disco differently. Mm -hmm. um, it was a long time ago now, but uh, yeah. And the more I, I absor um, absorbed myself, is the right way to say it, absorbed myself there, or plunged into the disco world, let's say, oh. um, I, I understood more, especially with the state of the world last year and that feeling of um, disconnect and wanting to reach people that there's so much in the roots of disco that is more than sparkly fun stuff that it yeah, was born yeah. out of struggle and one um thought that i really i really clung on to making this album was mm -hmm. a bear with me 
a disco ball is, is, is so emblematic of everything disco. But right. without that one light on it, it's not magical. And, right. But it just takes the one light. And when and I just found that that um, feeling of, of hopefulness last year was so helpful. Once that one tiny light goes on a disco ball and it spins, it, it the light refracts everywhere. And you've, you've got this magical fantasy world and, and that kind of kept me grounded in in the roots of disco but could also give into the abandon and escapism of, of disco music and right. the disco world very beautifully put absolutely couldn't agree more it's just that I one should, like i should have i should have written a song about that but i didn't figure that out until the end next one next one <laughs> yeah yeah Right. Um, Kali, you, are a, you, you know, you've seen fame stardom way before social media started and make, started making people stars. Uh, one, my first question is, how is today's stardom different from the stardom that you saw earlier? Um, it's, it seems faster, for one thing. <laughs> right. Uh, I guess, you know, there's better and worse. Okay. Um, I do remember some frustration when I started out that if if something was incorrect, and let's face it, there's always a lot of, you know, mm. uh, the oppressed stories, rumors that are not true. You didn't have the the means to be able to, right. uh, you know, to, 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 to tell your truth. Right. Um, I, I mean, we didn't know what was missing or I didn't know what was missing back then in, in as much as, connecting with fans, being able to, you know, really reach someone with the touch of a button. Mm -hmm. um, back then it was snail mail fan clubs, you yeah. know, you'd sign up and you'd get postcards in the year, yeah. through the year or a poster or special access. Um, I don't know. I don't know what the, the, the fast answer to that is. It's definitely sure. a, a very different landscape, but um, I've just tried to move with, <laughs> move, move with it. You have absolutely, I and mean, that's the amazing part that you know uh, you and you clearly are enjoying this as well. Um, you know the the younger bands, the younger singers, they are first getting the fame, then then comes the song. Uh, what do you why, what would be Kylie's one advice to them when it comes to just this sudden overnight fame with millions of followers? Wow, um, uh, hold on, <laughs> uh, I would. I guess you just, if, if you're grounded, you've got mm -hmm. every hope of handling it. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, it, I guess the danger is being swept away. Um, I, I, I feel fortunate that I, you know, I, I worked when I was young. I had success fairly early, but I still had to rock up to work at 6 sure. a.m. and learn my lines and, and deliver. Um, but yeah, it's so different now. Just, I would say, just remember reality from uh, from showbiz. Absolutely, absolutely. Very, you know, when you look back now, uh, what were the most fun years when you were performing? I know, you, was there a patch which you think was the most fun part in your journey? Um, hmm, I would say, I well, 2018, 2019. I okay. mean, that's kind of recently in my mind. So yeah, that was yeah. the Golden Tour and the Summer Tour and Glastonbury. Mm -hmm. And to have that many years of music to, to choose from and that many, years, that many years of history with audiences, right. it's been a blast. And yeah. I guess the, you know, the kind of the tools I've got in my toolkit now for touring. Because mm -hmm. when I started touring, you know, late 80s, mm -hmm. early 90s, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just, you know, treading water and trying to trying to get by. So I would say that it's in recent years that it's been most fulfilling for me because I, I've done all that hard work. I've had right. the sleepless night. I still have them, to be honest. Of course, I still have them. But yeah, it's been a real joy in performing these last few years. Right. And when you look back, was, was there a tough patch as well? Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Um, it, tough patch in, in career, in, in my personal life, in my, my, my health. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, in um, 2005, my cancer diagnosis changed everything. Right. Um, uh, but I, I mean, I've always 
being a very compassionate person, but I think when you have some experience, that is, you know, that there's more, that experience adds to your, um, oh. yeah, your understanding. So I've had my little, my little mountains yeah. to climb, yeah. but, um, <laughs> but we, we can try, yeah. yeah. Right, and uh, Kari, in the lockdown, we all did things that we had not done before. I heard you, I read somewhere that you took a haircut at home. Is that true? That I what, sorry? You took a haircut at home as well? Like all of uh, Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, well, I, maybe to call it a haircut is, is uh, over egging the pudding. I had a trim. My boyfriend, okay. <laughs> yeah, again, I think, did I give him a haircut? Maybe, I don't know, <laughs> all sorts of things. Yeah, home haircut. Oh it was time. God. It was necessary. Right. And uh, any plans to visit India anytime? Oh, please. Well, I've just promised we're going to do our next interview in person. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, of course, as soon as I can, I would absolutely, absolutely love to come visit. Right. Kylie, on NDTV, we have never had a singer and not asked them to sing a few lines. Do you think you can sing just two lines for our viewers who are watching this interview? Oh my gosh, which song? Um, your wish, your well, song. Well, okay. Can I do two? You can do two. <laughs> the three. first one, I think you're going to know. La, 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 la. That's the easy one. Okay. I just can't get you out of my head. For your love and it's all I think about. And then the other one is... <laughs> I want to chicken wiggy with you, boy. I want to chicken wiggy with you. Uh, 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 I want to chicken wiggy with you. I want to chicken wiggy with you, baby. <laughs> That's my favorite. I love seeing people dance to chicky wiggy. Absolutely um, beautiful, beautiful. I probably, I probably sang that uh, a little incorrectly. All I ever sing is, I want to chicken wiggy with you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is that the magic is still very much there. We would love to see you in India. We would love to see you perform. Well, yes, it's on my it's on my bucket list. I haven't performed in India. Yeah. Um, it it amazes me that you know my songs and and you're waiting with open arms. So I can't wait to come and visit. Great. Uh, take care and thank you so much for your time. Thank you.